He's up there. Hop on the beat. Welcome back to Debunking Iraqi Forgot. In this video, I'll be taking a look at part four. While not as popular as part three, part four still has a huge amount of misinformation surrounding it. So this will probably turn out to be another long video. As a preface to this video, I want to respond to a sentiment I've seen repeatedly in the comments. Obviously, Araki is not a flawless writer. He has no more or less flaws than any other writer out there, and I'll be covering the actual mistakes he's made in a separate video. As I've already said in my introduction video, I know that some people say it as a joke, but apparently that was not made clear enough, or they just did not watch that video. But it is abundantly clear that many people do not consider it a joke, and often list out the things they actually believe Araki forgot. There are a couple thousand comments on each of the previous three videos doing so, and I often show those comments on screen. But for whatever reason, people will still say this. Just because you mean it as a joke does not mean that everyone else does. Now let's get along to the video. The first topic is one that I've seen a huge amount of people bring up. Josuke fixing things incorrectly. Early on, some things like the bully's face and Jotaro's hat are fixed incorrectly, but later on this is apparently forgotten, and he is shown to just fix things perfectly. This one is wrong on multiple levels. First, Josuke has always been able to fix things perfectly. People act like this was a limit on Josuke's ability at the beginning, but the very first thing he has ever shown fixing is the turtle, which was fixed perfectly. After this, the bully's face and Jotaro were fixed incorrectly, while Josuke was mad about his hair. Then he goes on to heal plenty of things perfectly, and then his furniture is still fixed incorrectly after that. He even did it against Angela when he became a rock. Josuke can be seen doing it as late as the Enigma fight when he turned Terunosuke into a book. The incorrect fixing only ever happens when Josuke deliberately does it, or is too mad to care. I have no idea how people can claim it was forgotten, when not only does it continue happening, but it is not an immediate shift from one to the other. After the death of Josuke's grandfather, Josuke is unable to bring him back to life, which is one of the rules of Josuke's stand. Jotaro says that no standability is able to bring a person back from the dead. Some people mention the moment from Part 3, when Jotaro used Star Platinum to help resuscitate Joseph. In the previous video, I went over Joseph's revival, and how he was able to be revived since he only spent a short time without his blood. The blood is the thing that revived him. Jotaro essentially just replicated what a defibrillator would do, albeit more precise. In comparison, Josuke's grandfather had been completely shredded on the inside by Aqua Necklace, not something that would be undone by pumping his heart again. His brain may have also been destroyed, which is something that Aqua Necklace has been shown to do. Keicho Nijimura began searching for stand users to try and find one capable of killing his father. After Josuke meets him, he says that he can help him find one capable of curing him instead. I have seen many people ask why Josuke didn't cure him. First of all, it is directly stated that Crazy Diamond is not capable of curing diseases. Second, the father's transformation came from him merging with Dio's cells. At this point, the current state of the father is just how he is now. He couldn't be fixed by Crazy Diamond since he really isn't broken. The characters Tamami and Hazamata both start off tall at the beginning of their fights and ended up appearing shorter later on. Some people actually ask how this would happen, despite this not being a literal change. This is just a style change similar to almost every other JoJo character, whose appearance shifts over time. In the context of these characters, however, their shrinking shows how they were humbled after being defeated. They also aren't the only characters drawn short in Part 4, since Koichi is stylized to be much shorter than his canonical height. During the fight against Red Hot Chili Pepper, Okuyasu swipes the ground with the hand. This exposes an electrical wire that allows the enemy to escape. This is seemingly inconsistent with the previous examples of his ability, which shows that erased objects will fuse back together, which Okuyasu refers to as teleportation. A lot of people say that that aspect of the hand's ability was forgotten altogether. It appears after this fight, so that is not the case. This issue would be isolated to this scene. This is a very strange moment, since Okuyasu was just using the ability moments before. It's interesting to wonder what would actually happen if the ground teleported together. Would the entire world move? When Okuyasu erases the air, it's not like only air comes back in, other objects move over as well, like Josuke or the potted plants. The sign he erased was a singular object which came back together, but you couldn't possibly consider all of the ground as one object. When Okuyasu swipes at the ground, air would be teleported in to fill the gap as well. 
Rohan mentions that he gained Heaven's Door when he was shot by the Arrow three months ago, but the spin-off manga Rohan at the Louvre shows him using it during his teen years. It is debatable whether this story is even considered canon, since while it was written by Araki, it was created with a partnership with the Louvre and is not considered part of the Thus Spoke Kashibe Rohan series. This is similar to another short story, Jolene Fly High with Gucci, which is also considered non-canon. This is possibly the most well-known Araki forgot in the video, if not ever. The man who saved Josuke. As a child, Josuke was stuck out in the snow and was saved by a delinquent with a pompadour. He was so inspired by this that he modeled his own appearance after him. There is an astronomical amount of people who think that this was meant to be a setup for a time travel plot involving Bites the Dust, where Josuke would go back in time to save himself. As is extremely common for JoJo fan theories, this has been repeated endlessly as if it were fact that this was a scrapped idea. In reality, there is no source for such an idea ever existing. In an interview in 1994, while Part 4 was still publishing, Araki said that the flashback was not meant to have relevance later. However, people still repeat it despite this interview becoming more commonly known. People also seem to have a distrust for Araki interviews, since they claim he's just covering up his mistakes. Despite this, they will of course still point to interviews where Araki mentions forgetfulness. So I will go over some of the logic people use when insisting this is a dropped plot point and why it is flawed. People say that the bleeding has a similar pattern to Josuke's bleeding from the final battle, but it doesn't. Even if it did, this point is just confusing. People say that Araki forgets, but then simultaneously think that he would remember to include the small detail of the same blood pattern. If the blood was intentionally similar that late into the part, why would the time travel still not happen at that point? By this time in the arc, Bites the Dust's power had already been established and wouldn't be capable of sending anyone back that far. And why would he include it at that point when that interview had already taken place? The bleeding was just to show that the character was a delinquent, but had a heart of gold despite that, something which became an important part of Josuke's character. People have also said that the two have the same outfit and pins, when it's just a school uniform and the pins are completely different. People also seem to forget that his hair was actually a popular hairstyle at the time that scene takes place, and that characters within Part 4 repeatedly call his hairstyle outdated. People just can't seem to accept that the man was just a good Samaritan to help build Josuke's character motivation, and think that it must have been tied to some kind of huge plot revelation. Back in Part 3, Holly became sick since she was unable to control her stand. In the flashback in Part 4, we can see that Josuke was also sick at the same time. Despite this, Josuke was later able to completely control his stand. People seem to think that since Holly's stand went away after Dio's defeat, Josuke's would have too. I think the first problem with this is that people think Holly's stand just went away. It's not like Holly was sick just from being a stand user, as we saw her acting perfectly normal in the opening scenes despite at that point being able to see stands. She became sick when the stand started to fully manifest, which she was unable to handle. After Dio was defeated and the distress signal from Jonathan's body was gone, her stand would return to a dormant state. This is similar to Giorno in Part 5, who would have gone through a similar thing. Gold Experience was still in Giorno as a subconscious ability, but did not fully appear until his teenage years. This would be the same for Josuke, who would also gain the resolve needed to have a stand after being inspired by the man who saved him. Throughout Part 4, a myriad of minor characters are introduced, but many people use this as a slight against Part 4, asking why these characters aren't constantly coming back. The amount of side characters introduced is fitting for the small town setting, and works within the slice of life structure of Part 4. When the characters do come back, it's a treat, but I don't see why people expect them to be making constant reappearances, or for every character to be directly relevant to the overarching plot. This includes Shizuka, who people seem to expect would return in later parts, even though her appearing in either of them would make little sense. After entering the Ghost Alley, Rohan is now shown using Heaven's Door on Raimi without having to show her a page of his manga. People say that this aspect of his ability was forgotten. However, Rohan has a line directly stating that his stand ability has matured, and that he is now able to draw in the air to achieve the same effect. In this same scene, people point to the line Rohan says about Josuke. He says that the stand still does not work on people who cannot appreciate the art, like Josuke. Later on, he is still shown using the ability on him. Rohan is only saying this because he thinks that Josuke is too tasteless for the art, when previously, Josuke was just too mad to even notice the drawing. 
Others have said that there are multiple points where the character should have been taken away when they turned around inside the alley. However, the alley will only do that to you if you're in a certain part of it. During Shigechi's death, he is able to retrieve a button from Kira's jacket, which the group uses as a clue to track his identity. Some have asked why Josuke could not use Crazy Diamond on the button to lead them to Kira's location. Crazy Diamond can repair objects, but only if they have cohesive parts. The button itself is not really considered part of the jacket. If he had the thread, he would be able to fix it back, but the thread was still left on Kira's jacket. Even if he could fix it back, the button is so small that it would be nearly impossible to follow and keep track of. Kira is shown using his secondary bomb, Sheer Heart Attack, to attack Koichi and Jotaro. People ask why he was never shown using this ability again. They seem to forget that this arc ended with Josuke fixing Sheer Heart Attack back to him, making the ability utterly useless against Josuke, hence its absence in the final battle. It is even directly stated in the Bites the Dust arc that Sheer Heart Attack would be ineffective on Josuke. When Kira escapes, Josuke fixes back Kira's severed hand to follow him. People have asked why Josuke fixed the hand back to Kira, instead of holding onto the hand and fixing Kira back to him, which he was shown doing previously with Okuyasu. Josuke had no opportunity to grab onto the hand. Sheer Heart Attack was coming towards him, and the only option was to fix it back. As seen earlier, Sheer Heart Attack is bound to Kira's hand, and any stand ability affecting it will affect the hand as well. This was the entire reason behind Kira severing his hand in the first place, to prevent himself from being trapped again. Once Josuke fixed Sheer Heart Attack, it fixed the hand as well, sending it flying back to Kira. An extremely common question that people ask is why Joseph did not use Hermit Purple to find Kira. Most people use the fact that he came to Morio to find Akira Otoichi as evidence that he would still be able to find Kira the same way. However, at the beginning of that arc, Jotaro explains that Hermit Purple can travel through the power lines, which would be the way for him to find Red Hot Chili Pepper. If Spirit Photography was capable of finding Akira, coming to Morio would be completely unnecessary, since Spirit Photography can take a picture from anywhere in the world. The fact is that Spirit Photography is simply not very accurate. In Part 3, the connection with Jonathan's body caused all of Joseph's pictures to be of Dio. At the beginning of Part 4, Joseph attempted to take a picture of Josuke, but got one of Angelo instead. The amount of other stand users in Morio would interfere with any attempt to get a picture of Kira, especially with Kira remaining extremely low profile while he was disguised. Others mentioned the time that Joseph used his stand to locate the barrel of coal tar during the Empress fight. This kind of thing would only really work if Joseph knew what he was looking for, and nobody had any idea what Kira's new identity looked like. While investigating Kira's house, the group find his fingernail collection. Many people ask why Josuke couldn't fix them to have them lead them to Kira. Dead material is no longer considered a part of a living person, as seen when Josuke's blood had dried which allowed him to fix it. If this blood was considered separate after a few minutes, the nails would be too in a similar length of time. Fresh nails could be fixed back, but since nails are constantly regrowing and replacing themselves, they'd be considered separate after a short period of time. One of the minor characters introduced in Part 4 is Mikitaka, a character who insists that he is an alien. He possesses the power to shapeshift, but is seemingly unable to see stands. Some people expected more to be learned about him, and say that Araki forgot to expand on whether he was really an alien or not. This one is just strange. Mikitaka is a joke character, and the entire point of the joke is that nobody can tell if he's really an alien or just acts strange. Based on what Araki wrote about Mikitaka and Jojo Veller, it is pretty clear that this was left intentionally vague. Expanding on Mikitaka would miss the entire point of the character. The stand highway star is shown luring in Rohan using a room, where an illusion of Kira is shown. People seem to think this was forgotten, which you can add to the long list of people saying an ability was forgotten when it wasn't used again. Despite Yuya Fungami only appearing briefly one other time and having no opportunity to use it, Others ask how he could have an ability like this, despite tons of other stands having unrelated abilities before and after this one. While Josuke is riding on the motorcycle, he steals a phone to call Koichi. He accidentally breaks it when he grabs it, so he grabs another one soon after. People say that Araki forgot that Josuke could repair the phone. This is another one which is just insane. I really don't see how people can honestly say this about this random joke scene, when the whole joke is that he got another phone so fast that he didn't need to repair it. Some have asked why Yuya Fungami didn't use his sense of smell to help the group track Kira. Like with a huge portion of Araki Forgots, there wasn't even an opportunity for this to happen. 
Josuke got Yuya out of the hospital to find Koichi in the Enigma fight, and meanwhile, Rohan had the new lead on Kira which led them to the finale. If there was some huge gap between these two events, this would be understandable, but this just comes down to people not even thinking about the course of events. Just like in the previous part, people bring up Starfinger, asking why Jotaro didn't use it in his fights. Considering he only has a few fights, this won't be that hard. Against the Rat, Starfinger would be completely useless. The Rat was very far away, and Starfinger is only ever shown extending for one or two meters. Next is Sheer Heart Attack. When Jotaro's full strength punches can do nothing to stop it, Starfinger would be even more ineffective. And lastly, Kira, who needed to be stopped before using Bites the Dust. Kira was some amount over 5 meters away, since Koichi had to run forward before getting him into the range of 3 freeze. This was outside of Starfinger's range. Kira was too far away for Jotaro to get a clear shot in without Koichi's help. In the Bites the Dust arc, Hayato becomes trapped in a time loop. Rohan reads Hayato's memories, which have premonitions of events that happen soon after. People ask how he could have those memories if this was the first time they've happened. I think the issue here is people assuming that this is the first loop. Hayato's mind must have written off the first loop as a dream, but in actuality, he still went through the day's events that led to Rohan's death. However, the ability only activates upon someone learning Kira's identity and exploding, so what exactly happened? In the first loop, Rohan must have learned Kira's identity from questioning Hayato, and then exploded. Nobody's actions are set in stone during the time loop, so many different outcomes are possible. The warning about Rohan's death would only be there if it had happened in a previous loop. Rohan reading this would cause him to learn about Kira's identity earlier than he would have before. Instead of automatically exploding from the time of death of the previous loop, Rohan manually triggered the bomb from reading Kira's identity, making this his new time of death. At one point, Hayato intentionally triggers one of Kira's bombs, so that Josuke will not be blown up. But Josuke is able to fix him and prevent his death. People have asked why this would be possible. It seems like people miss that Killer Queen does not create literal explosions. It erases you, and it can be seen with Shigechi that you are alive throughout the entire process. I can only assume this is from people who only watched the anime, where the effect of the explosion on Hayato looks much more serious. As for why Josuke wasn't able to heal Aya, he was too far away and didn't know she was going to explode until it was too late. In the final confrontation, Kira reveals his identity to a paramedic in an attempt to use Bites the Dust. People have asked how this would work, since with Hayato, he was the one who had to reveal Kira's identity to someone else for the ability to activate. However, this is just one part of Bites the Dust's ability. In order for the time loop to happen, time would have to be rewound in the first place. This happened after Hayato realized Kira's identity and was killed by him. Bites the Dust let him rewind to when Hayato was alive, and simultaneously plant the ability on him. Kira revealed his identity to the nurse and was ready to manually detonate her in order to start a new time loop with her as the host for Bites the Dust. And that was everything for Part 4. While not the longest video, I feel like the misconceptions in Part 4 may be some of the most widespread of any part. Next time, we'll be debunking a Rocky Forgot in Part 5. As with the previous video, please leave your examples of a Rocky Forgot in the comments for future parts. You can also join the Hamid Beat Discord to receive updates on any progress on new videos. Thank you for watching. This is the part of the video where I thank my $5 and $10 patrons. Thank you Northern the Lich. Thank you Alex Ramirez. Thank you Raziana. Thank you Boat Girl. And thank you Laura.